Morning class, this is Maureen O'Reilly, your instructor. No fair here in Wisconsin, the Packers lost and it's minus three degrees outside. So I'm hoping that this video will turn out to be a little bit more cheerful for you. This is the very first of my Sunday video announcements. And it's usually just a compilation of things that I've noticed during the week, questions that have come up from you students, or things that I want to discuss about upcoming assignments. Usually not too complex, not too long, and I would urge you if you think you have an item, a concern, or a question that others in the class might be interested in hearing about, please forward it to me by uh, Brandman University email, and I'll include it in the following week's announcements. So number one, um, just an update in case you didn't see your email yet. Um, I had mentioned in our first virtual class that there is a sample paper and that it can be used for week two um, and many of you found out that you couldn't access it. And um, plumbing into the depths, the bowels of Blackboard, I found out that there was a button that somebody had left turned off, I guess from last semester. So I turned that back on and I hope that all of you now have access to the sample paper. So you'll go to week two in Blackboard, click on that, and you'll see a page with six divisions. Go down to the very bottom division, and that is Assignment Details. Double click on that title, Assignment Details, and it should open a new page with three divisions. And at the very bottom, is the it, it says Sample Papers, although I believe it's actually just one paper um, and also a PDF of that paper. And it also has some great comments about the grading of that particular paper and why or why it why not it didn't succeed. So you can learn from uh, a previous person's experience. Um, I've been spending some time over the past 24 hours reading the first discussion board entries. And he here's what I want to say because you have until... Uh, tonight at midnight, that is Sunday the 17th at midnight, to complete your discussion board. First of all, you have to have the five entries that I, I spoke of during our virtual class. Second, one of the requirements of the assignment is to include a PDF, um, uh, an access link for the article that you reviewed. In other words, one of the articles that was uh, citing Ballas and Boren um, had to be used and so you should have access so that both uh, myself and your classmates can go and take a look at the article. So make sure that you've included that. Um, if you didn't include it in your initial entry, go back and put it in as an addendum. Um, the other thing I want to say is this is graduate school. I know you know you're in graduate school, but I just wanted to let you know you are in graduate school. So that means it's it's quite different than when you got your bachelor's. Um, it means that you're meticulous, that you go back and you check spelling and grammar. You make sure that you're not just thinking you've got it right on APA, but you're double checking with your APA publication manual. See, I keep it right by my desk, too. And you want to make sure your citations and references are correct. Because if they're not, you're pretending you're not in graduate school. You're just sort of fluffing it off. And now is not the time. You can no longer fluff that kind of stuff off. I certainly will be trying to help all of you by giving you feedback on discussion boards, papers, anything that you submit to me about whether or not your APA is uh, formatted correctly. And it really does matter because this is one of those classes where you're supposed to be learning that and uh, being meticulous is part of that. Um, also, I would urge you to read your emails and to look at Blackboard regularly. And the reason being is those are our main methods of communication intra-class. So, uh, you know, please make sure that at least every other day you're going in and taking a look at what's new, answering things, taking note of things, adding stuff to your schedule. All of those are important. Now a note about copying and pasting. This is exciting. So, copying and pasting. 
I mentioned during our virtual class that I really highly, sternly, completely, strongly recommend that you copy and paste the topic for the discussion board into your initial entry. In other words, that should be what your classmates and I see when we open your initial entry. Why? Because it helps you stay on track. As you write, many of you uh, this first time around sort of la lost track lost sight of the ultimate goal of this discussion board, which was to answer the question, you know, did the people who cited Ballas and Boren do so correctly? Um, you know, in our course materials, it said very clearly, this is an often cited article, the Ballas and Boren article, and it's often misused, misinterpreted. So did the particular author or group of uh, authors that you chose, the article you chose, did they interpret, did they use Ballas and Boren correctly? So that was really, you know, you know, eyes on the prize. That's what we were looking at. So um, copying and pasting that topic really helps you stay on track. Um, reverse citations, this wasn't just to talk about what was in the article. It was to say, what is the relationship between the article I chose and Ballas and Boren? So the other point on copying and pasting, and those of you who have had me in previous classes know this is sort of my bet noir. Um, when you copy and paste references, holy moly, what a bad, bad idea. And here's why. When I'm looking through the discussion boards this week, I can tell exactly who copied and pasted because most of them are not in APA format. You do realize that other professions do not use APA format widely. You do realize that, don't you? But in nursing, this is the format of choice. This is what you must use in order to submit for publication, in order to pass your courses at Brandman or any other graduate school. So when you use a reference and you copy and paste it, if it's not an APA, it is your responsibility as a graduate student, as a meticulous graduate student, to make sure that you have converted it to APA format. And many of these weren't. For instance, do you capitalize all words in the title of an article? That's a question you should know the answer to. The other thing is, do you abbreviate the words used in the title of a magazine, a journal? That's another question you should know the answer to. I'm not going to give you the answers right here. Look it up in APA to make sure that you know so that as soon as you copy and paste that reference, you can look at it and say, whoa, that's not going to pass muster. I need to correct that and make sure it matches APA format. Again, your responsibility. Um, you have time to go back and fix those things today if you need to, but make sure that it's correct. Um, and as for APA, you know, most people think that they have a pretty good idea of how to cite and also how to write a reference for the reference list at the end of their paper or the end of their discussion board, but that may not be true. And so I'm asking you, you know, it's just a few pages in, in both instances, but read about how to write a citation. Read about how to add a reference to a reference list and then go back and use it. Double check against it. You know, when you're doing a discussion board, you may have one or two references. It's a pretty easy job. But remember that when you're doing your DNP project, um, for instance, I started out with 97 references. That was a lot of double checking, but I had to do it in order to be A, pass as a graduate student. Um, you know, my my final thesis had to be passed by my committee. And second, in order to be taken seriously when I submitted for publication, the APA had to be correct. Now, I will start grading on Monday, and I hope uh, you will look at what we're, um, what I've written, what I've said. If you have comments and need to reply to me, please do so by email. 
Um, I try and get them out within a day or two of the end of great of submission time, which is uh, tonight, the 17th at midnight, because I think that um, hopefully the information that I offer you is something you can learn from and use in your next assignment. Now, um, I think we've talked already about week two, um, the assignment there about social mapping. Social mapping itself, uh, the map itself is done in PowerPoint, and then it's copied and pasted into a Word document, the sample of which is what I talked about at the very beginning of this video. So you should now have a, an example to look at, and although you won't follow it slavishly, you'll do your own thing, and you'll check your APA carefully. Um, there are a couple things I can uh, remind you of. You only need a title page and an abstract. You can use the same um, running head as they use in the sample paper, and also use the same headers. In other words, you will have the centered, bold, um, upper and lower case title of your short paper, and then you will have a conclusions, also centered, bold, upper and lower case. And if you have any questions about that, I think it's page 62 in the APA manual. Uh, that talks about headings and again you only need two headings and then your reference page and then your figure one it's not an appendix it's a figure which is your um, PowerPoint created social map so that's it for today and I'll see you next week. Please don't ever hesitate to uh, get a hold of me, first via email, then by text or by phone call, depending on increasing uh, levels of urgency. So um, this is Maureen O'Reilly signing off.